us and discover a quartet of nations, the last hidden gems of Europe nestled like nuggets in the Southern Balkans. We begin our journey in Albania, a country revealed through its historic cities, homemade sweets, fine wines, open air markets, and a mix of cultures. A fantastic adventure for families, Albania has eight UNESCO World Heritage Sites and sparkling coastlines along the Adriatic and the Ionian Seas. Tirana, the capital, with its wide boulevards and Italian flair. Barat, built on the banks of the awesome river, well known for its white Ottoman houses. Skudra, with its pretty promenade and old stone castle. And the aquamarine waters of stunning Lake Coman, surrounded by the mountains painted with nature's jagged brush. Our next stop is North Macedonia and the charming town of Orid, one of the oldest settlements in Europe, once considered to be the epicenter of Slavic culture. Set on the exquisite Lake Orid, some think that this gorgeous deep lake is three million years old. In the ancient capital of Skopje, home of Alexander the Great, dating 4000 BC, we find the Kale Fortress with tales from Neolithic times, and in a nearby Totobo, we are mesmerized by the amazing painted mosque. On to Kosovo, where its Ottoman heritage is still alive in mosques, bazaars, and bridges, we visit Pritzrin, where a sea of red rooftops sprawls to the mountains, Pristina, the capital and historic trading and mining center, and Kurcha, to shop for unique handmade crafts. Finally, Montenegro lures with its magical lakes, medieval coastal towns, mouth-watering cuisine, fabulous fjords, and scents of Adriatic Sea. From famous Budva to fortified Kotora at the foot of the Mount Lopchen's limestone cliffs, to the city of Sentinje, Montenegro's old royal capital and cradle of its culture and history, this tour will leave you yearning to return. Our custom trips are drawn from a menu of enticing experiences with something interesting for everyone. This is Michael Gelber, CEO of iWorld of Travel, inviting you to experience another memories beyond destination. I world of travel. Expect more. Do more. Well, good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're from. Uh, my name is Michael Gelber, CEO of I world of travel. We appreciate you joining our leadership webinar series. This is our, I think our 20th or 19th one this year, our second to last. We have one more for Egypt coming up uh, in two days. Uh, so we appreciate you participating. Let me just tell you a quickly, uh, uh, just a real quick overview of the company. Uh, since we are, uh, this is being hosted by iWorld to Travel. Our company has been around for over 53 years, established in 1967, and was really led by my father for over four decades. My father was not only a, a pioneer in tourism to Israel and the Middle East, but really a pioneer in tourism period and really set the best practices uh, that are being used by a multitude of tour operators today. As my father took that model from uh, the Israel market and expanded it globally. Uh, and we expanded to markets under the umbrella of Latour and Asian Vista and Europe and beyond. And uh, when my father passed away in 2016, we uh, decided to put one brand, get rid of the sub brands, I World the Travel, and it's become my honor uh, to have this be a legacy company uh, uh, to represent my father and all the things he did for the industry. There are two things that we really uh, take pride on and that we follow through on our, our commitment to my father and his legacy in the company. One is that we have a commitment to the tourism boards to ensure that we're representing those destinations in a way that they should be represented and be featured. And secondly, that we stay committed to the travel advisors exclusively. We do not go direct to consumers. We only work with travel advisors. We are B2B and uh, we will stay true to that uh, as long as a Gelber or anybody who is gonna be leading this company. Uh, our company is really uh, has a multitude of product lines, uh, but really first and foremost, we're really, it's an FIT company. It doesn't matter whether you have packaged programs or not, everything is customized, whether you're customizing it for a solar tra solo traveler or the idea of solo travel, faith-based, which we have grown a, a reputation on doing faith-based tours throughout the globe. Uh, family travel, which as if you've been on any of these webinars before, you've heard me say that I think uh, travel uh, prior to COVID was uh, represented over 30% of the, of, the, of the tourism dollars. And I think uh, with COVID, because we've really gotten a greater sense of time 
and family and what we're missing out on. We're going to see some incredible growth in terms of families traveling together, families, multi-generation, skip generation. You know, listen, time is our commodity. It's the only thing we have that can't be taken, uh, that, that, we, that we can't uh, replicate. And so we want to do the most with it as we can. I think we've learned that through COVID. Traditional groups, uh, city tours, shore excursions, although I will tell you, I think shore excursions are going to be a little different for us as we're talking to some of the cruise lines because of the protocols in place uh, that require them to have complete control from uh, disembark to embark uh, any port destination. And of course, wellness travel, which we could all use uh, more of that. Uh, and our focus as a company is to create memories beyond moments. My father always led this company with the idea that this is personal. Uh, it's not business. You know, we're entrusted with the relationships that we have from our advisors and their relationships that you have with your clients. And that's a big responsibility. And my father never lost sight of that and will never lose sight of that as well. The, the opportunity that we have to serve you and serve your clients. And our mission statement is real simple. It's one word, it's experience. Um, whether it's you're working for us, you're working with us or traveling with us, uh, we keep it simple. It's that we want your experience to be so good today that you want to come back tomorrow. Um, and that's as much as you can do is control the moment as we certainly learned over these last nine months. That's it. That's I kept it short. <laughs> we were, we learned over these 19 or 18, 19 presentations that we want to keep it short and sweet. Most people do know about our company. And so now let me just share with you the panelists that we'll be having for today's presentation. Obviously, myself we will have Zahava Batong, which most of you, I think, are very familiar with, Vice President of Global Sales, our specialist in the Middle East. Uh, Alita Poljevic, which I think many of you are aware of as well, the product development, as well as uh, our European specialist, and really globally, both of them do global uh, understand the globe pretty well. They've both been in the business for quite a long time. That's really what we pride ourselves in is, is that our team, our experience, not just, uh, you know, know about a place, but actually intimately visited or worked with it or lived there. And so you really are dealing with experts uh, in education. And then we're very pleased to have Enver Mamedi, who is the president of the Albanian Tourism Association. He will be speaking a few minutes about uh, what we're seeing in Europe right now, especially in this particular region and the gems of Europe. And he's also uh, the general manager of our, of our partnership. Uh, you know, everything, we have 30 global partners throughout the, the world uh, that we really entrust in them and they become friends, family and partners. And of course, with any team uh, like ours, even with Enver, uh, his right-hand person is Arbana Leshi, who really handles all the day-to-day, -day, works with us intimately, has been in the business uh, for many, many years, six years with our partner, handles everything from the itineraries, the ground operation, the experience, the, the tour manager, and really we're pleased to, to have such a, such a good group working with us in this destination. So at this point, I'm going to uh, ask Enver to turn his uh, unmute, and he's going to uh, share a few words uh, from the uh, Albanian Tourism Association. Enver? Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, everyone who joined uh, such excellent webinar and uh, opportunities to share together what we have done and what we want to do in the future. I first want to really thanks again you and your team for excellent job and the ideas to create the new destination and putting up the Balkan, which is uh, really the great new destination in Europe, called today Europe, new Europe destination. And uh, I'm sure uh, we are we do our best to create opportunity together for such new countries who come very interesting in nowadays as destination created in excellent atmosphere in Mediterranean areas where everything is uh, 300 days sunshine and the uh, nature and the culture and a lot of history. I, I, I'm proud to share ideas of destination in, let's, let's share Balkan is 11 countries. And uh, nowadays the picture of the country in Balkan is created in North Balkan and South part of the Balkan. North Balkan is a border of uh, Austria and Hungary, starting from Slovenia, Croatia, coming down in Serbia and Bosnia. And the south part of the Balkan is uh, Montenegro, Albania, Kosovo, and uh, 
but in the North Macedonia. But uh, in the Balkan, we have the uh, East part, which is uh, Bulgaria and Romania and Turkey. They are very interesting destination with uh, great opportunities. Uh, nowadays, we have excellent infrastructure, a lot of history cross point between countries and the clients from the state far uh, destin long haul destination have a lot of opportunity in different uh, structure of the uh, tours. We, com we are company not 53 years uh, as you, Michael, are, but uh, we are half of the age of you, 27 years in that business. I'm founder of the company and we try to develop as much of the destination. And nowadays, in experience of us, the long haul destination who come in Balkan up than 10 days uh, can get opportunity to see different countries because of the opportunities that we are speaking for very small countries connected with all each other's in one and a half hours, two hours from capital, capitals to the capital. And uh, nowadays, uh, all Balkan areas become very interesting for a lot of investment. Uh, all the big chains, starting from Marriott, Hyatt, Sheraton, Hilton, are present in each capital of the Balkan. And... Uh, uh, now we have a new infrastructure for big incentive groups and uh, conference and the Balkan become very competitive destination compared to all other destinations in Europe as well. We have extremely nice gastronomy. It's very lovely, Natu. We have a lot of combined tours. And nowadays, uh, behind of culture like TaylorMade, we are, you know, you need to know we are TaylorMade company. We customize for each of our partners as we done together for destination, what we are speaking. And uh, out of the normal culture tour, destination in Balkan become very interesting for incentive and corporate. FIT clients are very interesting in our destination. And we have a lot of opportunity to join culture, to join cruises, to join nature, to join gastronomy. And I'm sure we have a lot of time in the future with all of our partners to share, depend on their request, customized tour who can become very interesting for the future cooperation. I don't think I have more time but I want to, I'm here to follow all of the uh, rest of the, our webinar and for everything, everyone who has questions, I'm pleasure to, uh, to answer to them. Terrific, Andrew, I appreciate it. Just real quickly, tell us how the things are being handled in terms of COVID. I think that's what, as the, uh, the president okay. of the Tourism Association, just take a minute. I mean, I'm sure everyone's doing protocols and so on, but just take a minute before I put Arvana on. Yeah, we are going in this, we call second step. Uh, all Europe become day by day by very big numbers, including Balkan as well. Uh, I'm speaking, for example, in Albania, there are more than 30,000 people F, uh, infected. In Montenegro is quite the same number. In Macedonia North, it's a double numbers. But we have very few lost life, which is thanks God. Uh, we are speaking in Albania from the first day, 637 people lost the life. In, in Montenegro, 400 people. In Macedonia, 1,300. But country in Balkan are open for trip and the restriction become for the back flight home. Uh, we are not in the red line. We are in critical zone. All Balkan is in critical zone. Means people need to be, who come to Balkan or leave the Balkan, need to have 72 hours before coming PCR uh, and uh, control if they have problems, seven days quarantine. Uh, everything is under control. Every day we have update from border to border. Borders are open to travel, but we need all to be 
to be careful and to take uh, respect of the distance, mask, and uh, not lock down, to keep not lock down calm. Uh, we have uh, very strict rules in hotels. We have uh, clean, we have from uh, COVID a lot of rules in all hotels. And uh, we can say that country still till middle of December by notice and by estimation will be coming down step low, very slow. And we hope middle of December, the new phase and new picture come up in our area. This is for now, this is for now. And uh, we are all not uh, closed, not locked down. We work from office, but we have very strict condition rules, mask, distance, cleaning, and the rules of uh, to be certificate from the COVID in our structure, I'm speaking for hotels. Okay, terrific. Thank you for the update. Uh, appreciate your participation and your partnership. Next up is our Arbana Leshi, as I already introduced and mentioned her background. She's just a terrific partner, really hands-on. And uh, she'll put her mic on now and then everyone else will have theirs off. And Arbana, it's yours. Just let me know when on each one. Yep, we are. Uh, thank you very much for presenting to me. Uh, I will say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today on this session. I really hope that we will be able to give you uh, some in viewers regarding the beautiful area that we are gonna present today. Uh, as Mr. Ember mentioned, uh, Balkan states uh, where we are located and what we are presenting today is quite a large area with 11 countries, but today we will be uh, located or concentrated in four of them, as you see right now on the map. Uh, we are talking today for Albania, North Macedonia, Kosovo and Montenegro. As you can see from the mapping, uh, we share the same Mediterranean Sea with Italy and Greece. We are very close with them by borders and uh, we have a very, very good connection. The idea why we are offering this destination, Mr. Michael, you can go next. Uh, the idea why we are offering this destination. Actually, as uh, Mr. Ember mentioned as well, this area is being called the new Europe. Also for many European countries, this area is less uh, known or less uh, uh, checked or less visited. However, lately it has become more and more in the loop and we invite all our partners and all our clients and our distinguished guests to be able to visit these countries before the globalization takes over. This destination is still very, very uh, virgin, nature-based, has an amazing history, has an amazing background, cultural, has lots of UNESCO protected sites, is so budget friendly compared to all the other Europe, uh, European countries. It has an amazing nature where you can see a spectacular uh, sceneries and it's amazing how fast they change in a very short amount of time. And this is what we will be able to see during this presentation and what we want to offer to you. It is a destination with a very warm climate. It, the flights and connections are bringing us very, very close each time. Of course, none from uh, America can come directly to our destination. However, we are, we are online and we are with direct flights with the most important European capital cities via Alitalia or Turkish Airlines or Wizz Air or any other big uh, flight company which is flying. We have daily flights or sometimes several flights per day directly from Rome, from Berlin, from Athens, from Frankfurt, from uh, Turkey, from Istanbul. And all these flights, once you are in Europe, to reach Balkan destinations, specifically what we are mentioning today, takes no longer than two hours on maximum. Besides the flight connections, a very good connection our country, the Balkan states, has also via um, sea, uh, sea lines. It is 
that we make the most out of, out of uh, Mediterranean Sea. And for this reason, we have very, very good connection with the ferry lines from Italy and from Greece. We can uh, come from Bari, Brindisi or Ancona to Dura, Saranda and Flora, or also use the Greece, uh, the Corfu Island uh, to connect the Southern part of Albania, which it, it will take less than one hour and 40 minutes and sometimes even less if we take the big, uh, the speedboat. These countries have a very, very good uh, border connection with, with each other. The good thing is that they are all very close and the borders are very dynamic, are very uh, facile to, to move into and the clients, uh, especially Americans, have no uh, delays at all on these borders. We can move next, Tom. <clears throat> Today we are speaking and we are presenting the hidden gems of Europe. You can see also the pictures and what we are gonna present today is a very beautiful tour which our team has put together, especially uh, following the very uh, special details which iWorld of Travel offers for their clients. Uh, we want to present to you one by one all the countries that we will be visiting. Albania. So Albania is a very small country located, uh, as you see, uh, we have two different coastal lines. It's a very small country, less than 3 million inhabitants. We have one international airport. Our language is Albanian and uh, we have a Mediterranean climate. This country, although it's so small, next, although it is so small, uh, is one of the oldest uh, civilization on our region. Uh, as you, you saw there, we have Albanian language. It is a special one. It's a second to none. It's not a branch of any other language. It's, although that small of a country, we already have eight UNESCO protected sites. We have a very good climate enabling the destination to be all year round a travel destination. We have two different coastal lines. It is a very budget friendly. Hospitality is the most uh, distinguished uh, point of, of this destination. And uh, it has a very young population, which enables everyone to, to have the best, um, uh, how to say, the best assistance. If something uh, you don't see or you don't find immediately, everyone on the street will find a language to speak to you. So it is, it is fairly, very, very good, very good point. Uh, we can move next on. Albania, uh, as I mentioned also before, has two different coastal lines for everyone who wants to spend a vacation by our beautiful beaches, can have two different experiences even in, in one week stay. It is the Adriatic part, which uh, features very wide and sandy beaches, uh, amazing for uh, families and for uh, families who are traveling with children. And it is also the Ionian coast, which features uh, very beautiful beaches, uh, pristine views, um, hidden beaches as well, which sometimes can be reached only by walking or uh, by, by using the motor bike, the motor um, waters. And uh, it's, a, it's beautiful any time that we want to present a pre or post extension for our clients. This is a, a beautiful, a beautiful um, a way or a beautiful uh, add on to the tours. Next. Uh, as you can see, these are only some pictures. We can move next on to the uh, Union Sea as well. Uh, as you can see, these kind of sceneries are quite, quite uh, familiar and, and are, are quite often in, with, uh, during the Albanian coast. The, if we go one by one, there are many, many cities in Albania which are our, our pride. If we start with Tirana, it is the capital city of Albania. It is a capital that has practically everything very, very close. It is strategical, is the center of economical and cultural uh, of, of Albania. It is very close to the airport, 30 minutes stop. It's very close to the mountain scenery and it is very close to the beach area, the tourist area. 
It, it is a, a city where all the universities are located, therefore the population is quite young. It has an amazing nightlife. It has lots of museums and lots of things to see. Some of them we will be also uh, featuring in our tour. If we can move next, Mr. Michael. Uh, the, the picture that you are seeing right now is, is one of the most oldest mosques on Tirana, and this is also part of the tour. This city, uh, you will see all kind of influences, starting from Italian ones to Ottoman ones. Uh, there are very beautiful streets, very beautiful neighborhoods. There are very beautiful coffee shops. And there are so many uh, experiences which can be seen on this uh, metropolitan capital city, but that has also lots of tradition in all corners of it. If we can move next. Um, so uh, Albania has been for a very long time under the communism era. If you can see the picture, sorry, because I'm starting with the one on right, on top right, the picture of the bunker. Uh, it's one of the most interesting because lots of people ask us about them. During the communism era, while the rest of the world was, was having the Cold War situation, in Albania we were having another kind of war, but more and more it was a kind of paranoid war, which was only on the, man, on the mental side of our dictator. Uh, these bunkers were built during the 1960s, late 1960s, and were more than 170,000 that were all spread all around the country. Nowadays, we have made the best out of them and we use them as a spot for cultural and for historical point of view. In some cases, they have become uh, coffee shops or warehouses or sometimes even shelter for, for those that are homeless. This we try to combine in our culture because it's part of our history, it's part of who we are, it's part of what we have inherited. And in our tours, this will be also present, but you will see them presented in a very nice way. For example, the coffee that you are seeing, the uh, Comiteti Coffee Museum, is a combination of that time with everything that is done today I mean, it's a, it's a, the owner is in late 30s and has produced and has created this kind of uh, coffee museum that is dedicated to this time and is definitely, definitely, even for us locals, a very nice feature to see and to do. And this is what we want to present also to our customers. Albania is also a country where the religious is uh, very uh, tolerant. I mean, you can see uh, in Albania is a, a fact that uh, we have the, head, the world headquarter of Bektashi Center. And within the country, we have Christian, we have uh, Muslim, and we have Bektashi, and everyone lives very peacefully. And this you will see also in the religious, uh, the religious uh, mosques or churches or whatever, or synagogues that you will see around. Of course, the food. The food is definitely um, a Balkan uh, pride. So in every tour, you will, you will be experiencing uh, lots of food. <laughs> it generally, you will gain some weight at the end, but trust me, it will be all worth it. Uh, we can move next. Because if I, if I uh, stay by talking like this, we'll never end. <laughs> uh, Berat. Berat is another city that once you are in Albania, definitely you have to visit. It's a, it's a city which is part of UNESCO and it has definitely uh, uh, merit all the, this, this status, not only because of the beautiful architecture and very unique one, which is called different, the city of thousand windows. If you sit by the, by the bridge on this city, you will see only the windows coming one over one uh, on, the, on, the, on the city. It is very close to Tirana. It's less than two hours and also to Duras. If we can move next. Besides the uh, architecture, it has a very beautiful history, a uh, very rich history. And during our tour, we will make our uh, guests experience 
the homemade sweets and the traditional Albanian hospitality in a third 300 years old house within this city. The houses on this city um, in most cases have been also developed into beautiful guest houses where also for the accommodation, uh, we use them a very, as a special item for our guests. Uh, this area is also very well known for very tasty wines and this will be the possibility to also join during the tour. It's not like you will find in our area uh, famous brands like uh, Chianti or uh, whatever else, uh, French or Italian wines, but you will find traditional Albanian wines which are produced passing generation by generation the way. So we try to, to keep very, very small what we, what we present, but to present the very biggest assets of, of this country. If we can move on. Another city that you will be seeing during our tour and which is also one of the most important ones in Albania is Škodra. It is uh, located in the northern part of Albania, it's the biggest one in the northern part of Albania. Some very uh, facts that not many people know about this city is that in this city is located the original handmade uh, Venetian factory mask. Here, uh, clients from all over the world can be in a, in a, in a handicraft uh, shop where they can see how originally, originally are handmade the mask that gets sold on, on the Venetian, on the Venetian uh, uh, stores and, and not only. This will be uh, experienced during our tour and of course is Rosafa Castle, which is uh, the jewelry of the country, is like the crown of, 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 this, of this city. Uh, in here will be the possibility to enjoy different uh, traditional show and very uh, local uh, traditional dishes. The thing to be noted is that from south to north of Albania, uh, there are different uh, rhythms, different uh, folklore uh, inheritance. There are different dishes and all of this will be definitely part of the tour and what you will experience. If we can move next. Oh, this one. Uh, it is one of the most beautiful tours that can be done on the northern part of Albania. It's very close to Škodra and it's a tour that generally, um, how to say, uh, it's the bridge, the connecting bridge between the uh, Albania and Kosovo. It's a tour that has taken the old aces because it's one of the most beautiful tours on, on, this, on this area. It's a tour that lasts less than two, two hours and a half. It's bet, best to be done during May, uh, from May until mid-September due to water levels. And it's definitely a must see, a must do, and therefore is absolutely part of our tour. If we can go on. Uh, another part of Albania, because we want to present everything that is special and different. Uh, we will pass the clients also in Kruja and in Fishta. Kruja is a typical Ottoman city. It is an uh, inheritance that we have. We don't say anymore from our occupators, but we say from our inhabitants, which have been for a very, very long time, for more than five centuries in Albania and in here you can find uh, a typical Ottoman city with very beautiful bazaar which has handicrafts which are completely Albanian and it is also a uh, home of our national hero uh, Skanderbeg. If we can move next one. In Fishta on this uh, on this agritourism which is called Mrizi Zanabe it is an experience that will bring our customers very close to everyday life, to the local experience, and they can see from their eyes how uh, the youth of Albania, after gaining some experience abroad, come 
in the country and they open something which benefits not only them and their families, but also the whole community. This you will be able to see on this area. The best of Albanian food served in the finest way possible. You will see not only, you will definitely not only eat in here, you can see everything around, you can chat with the locals, you can see how the everyday life is done. So it's a very uh, all-in experience. And for this reason, we try to, to, to combine it within our tours. If we can move next. Uh, so different scenery, but so similar cultures and similar histories. We are now in North Macedonia. This country, if we move next, is very close to Albania. In less than two hours from Tirana, we reach Ohrid. It's a very small country, as you see, it's less inhabitants than Albania. Uh, they have two different uh, airports, in Skopje and Ohrid. Uh, the climate is Mediterranean continental, is a little bit uh, colder than Albania, however, is a destination which can be all year round. Uh, North Macedonia is an ex-Yugoslavia uh, country. There are different flights, as I mentioned also for Albania, from all different uh, uh, capital cities. It features, it has within it one of the most beautiful part of UNESCO sites, which is Ohrid, which is at the same time cultural and natural uh, site. Um, it has lots of opportunities for active tourism, for adventure tourism, and of course for, for a cultural one. If we can move next. Ohrid. Ohrid is really the, the, the jewelry of, of, of uh, the jewel of North Macedonia. And for this reason also is a, is a very nice uh, settlement because you can see how uh, there are handmade uh, jewels from the, from the Ohrid pearls. Uh, Ohrid is a uh, how to say, the, the, the capital city of North Macedonia, but the capital city, uh, the cal cultural capital city. It is called differently the Jerusalem of Balkans, and it once had 365 churches, one for each day of the year. Some of them are always part of the tour, part of the Old Town tour. Of course, not all the 365 of them will be all done Christian like that. However, it's a, it's a city that offers so many possibilities beyond the romantic view, the beautiful sights. It can be done so many uh, beautiful things. And this will be definitely part of the tour from a boat tour or passing through monasteries that are around it or in a small village where you can see and you can taste the local uh, fish dishes. Uh, if we can move on, uh, the next city uh, of very importance in North Macedonia is, of course, the actual capital of it is Skopje. It is very close to Ohrid, less than three hours, uh, less than three hours drive. Um, what you see right now in the picture is how to say a re of the old times when Alexander the Great uh, once ruled on, on this area. And so uh, nowadays they have tried to keep the real, uh, the real uh, imposure and uh, beauty of, of this country with wide, uh, with wide boulevards and impressive buildings and all of this you can see. Although it seems uh, quite new right now, it is actually an inscanation of, of uh, how it used to be during the Alexander the Great rulers. From, uh, from Skopje, we will move uh, next to, uh, yeah, from Ohrid, we will move to Skopje and we will pass via Tetovo. In here, you will be able to see a very beautiful uh, mosque, which is differently called the Painted Mosque. What I want to mention as well for Macedonia is that it has a whole region uh, dedicated to, to wine. It is a very wonderful wine region and it is uh, the, the east part of, of North Macedonia and sometimes uh, we do include this as well. I mean, not to, to get drunk the people because they cannot drink in, in every country, but 
at least to taste how it is done because it is different in each of these destinations that we are mentioning. Next. Okay, we are now in Kosovo. As you can see also from the picture, uh, the main reason why we choose Kosovo is actually not only because it combines and it completes the routes and so doesn't make you to do round routes or repeating routes and uh, not so beautiful. It is a very small country. It's among the youngest one in Europe. It has the capital city, Pristina. The local currency is Euro. And it has a climate which is uh, colder than Albania and North Macedonia, but is still a very beautiful destination for, for the, uh, mostly for the nature. It has also uh, UNESCO protected sites. There are mostly uh, Serbian monasteries. And uh, the main point for tourism are, uh, is definitely the nature. If we move next on. <clears throat> Prizren. Prizren is a typical Ottoman city. It is um, the most important uh, cultural city, city in Kosovo. Uh, it is definitely worth it to visit. And it has, uh, although we mentioned also Kruja as an uh, Ottoman uh, city in Albania, in prison, you will find something completely different. The buildings here are all very um, small ones with, uh, as you see, with, with the rooftops. And it is a beautiful city where you can see craft handmade it, uh, jewels as well. And definitely a very, very um, tasty cuisine, but however, it needs a very uh, good stomach for it. Uh, this uh, will be able to be tested during a, a dinner, which we want to feature along with the wine tasting in the area. As you see, we love to, 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 to present our wines on the region. So this will be also part of the tour. As you see, the, the roads on Prizren are all a different tale, how to say. You, you can move on to the, these roads also on your own and you can see all the city in less than um, how to say, 30 minutes from, from the beginning to the end. But it's a very charming little city. If we move on. We are now in Montenegro. I mean, no one can expect that such a small country that is Montenegro to have so many to offer. In a very small amount of time, you can see from all kinds of sceneries. It is the smallest of the countries that we have mentioned so far. It has uh, Podgorica as its uh, capital. It has uh, different uh, official languages, Montenegrin and Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian and Albanian. It, although it is so small, it has so many languages spoken of. It has euros, a local currency. And it features um, a coastal line uh, which has beaches in some cases uh, similar to Albania and similar to Croatia as well. It is one of the uh, youngest, uh, one of the smallest uh, countries in Europe. It is part of ex Yugoslavia. And like most of other countries on this area, it has regained its independence uh, quite late. However, this has not um, prohibited it to be on the list of one of the countries that are most visited on, on our area. It has a very good connection with, via uh, sea with it, Italy and Croatia. Um, it has a very beautiful coastal line. It has different UNESCO protected sites, uh, combining uh, cultural and natural as well. Has amazing, amazing, amazing opportunities for adventure tours, such as rafting or kayaking or uh, mountain biking and so on. Uh, there are, although it is so small, each of the countries, each of the cities that are part of uh, Montenegro, it, it's like, they are different uh, jewels of it, so it, it, they are all, all important. If, uh, and uh, we try to, to in, le in that less amount of days that are in disposal to visit as much as possible from them. So we will visit uh, your bazaar if we move on to. <clears throat> 
Uh, Virpazar is a, is a lake that actually uh, Albania and Montenegro share between them. Is uh, Škodra and uh, uh, Virpazar area uh, share the same lake. But in the part of Montenegro, this is very, very, very well uh, developed as a tourism point. Here you can do bird watching or you can do just a small um, passing on a boat or a tasting of something of um, fishes of the area and the wines of the area. It is uh, naturally part of the tour. You don't have to derivate the road or, or anything. It is. It comes just naturally when you are passing from Škodra to uh, Montenegro. Uh, it is part of the tour. It is there. So you definitely have to see it. We, mo we move now in Budva. It's a, a beautiful city. Uh, shared or uh, divided in the old town and also the new part of it. The old town is characterized from uh, buildings such such you are seeing right now with stone uh, buildings and cobblestone roads, while the new part of it, of course, features the old hotels and, and uh, new restaurants and so on. If we move, um, ah, yeah, in here there is a statue of a dancer in Budva and Anyone who touches it becomes uh, a dancer. Um, no, I'm kidding. It, it means that it, ha it, will, it will feature good luck in the future. Kotor. Kotor is a small but beautiful and charming uh, city. It is a city that uh, if you pass through the, through the roads of it, it will give you the impression that you have already been here. And uh, it is really beautiful, homey, it's a UNESCO site. It features uh, very beautiful uh, sites from the churches. It is a portal city as well. Very big, very, very big uh, um, ships come in here with lots of tourists. And such small country has sometimes to develop ways how to um, decrease the number of tourists because they are so many for such small, such small city. However, we will be visiting it in a very nice time, in very not so quite crowded time, if we move into. Uh, Peras is a very close uh, city with Kotor and is a city where um, we have thought for accommodation of our groups. It is such beautiful view. I mean, this is what they will be seeing. This is what they will be uh, seeing in the first thing in the morning. Uh, it is a very beautiful scenery. It doesn't take too much to talk. It's very much, much more beautiful if you see it up close. It's one of the famous land landmarks on, on this city is the Sveti, Sef, Sef, uh, Sveti Ivan's Fortress. And it is also the um, Our Lady of the Rock Church, which can be reached only by boat. And the boat itself, the boat trip itself, is a kind of an item, so it it cannot be missed in our in our tour. If we move on, Cetinia. All these cities we are mentioning a lot of them, but all these cities are so close by that all of them can be seen in one day. They are very 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 close, and Cetinia, which we are mentioning right now is a very small city and has been once the capital city of uh, Montenegro. It's the place where their royal has been living and now is more like a, a city of the embassies. Uh, it will be part of the tour and uh, we move next to Nyegushi. Nyegushi is a small village and is famous for its uh, homemade ham and cheese. Uh, here, the clients, the guests, can be seen not as tourists, but as travelers can see and as locals can see how the ham is done locally, how it is produced, how it is served, and so on. I mean, it will be a very, very in touch, very close touch with, with, uh, with, uh, with the local, local way of producing. Um, if we move next, I guess this is the end for me. However, I want to say uh, two words uh, also for the tour. I know that 
there are many, many, many names that are mentioned do, during the, the presentation. Of course, I'm sure that not all of them will be reminded, but no worry, the test does not begin now. However, it doesn't matter how many times someone will tell you how beautiful this area is. Once that you are here, once that you send your most uh, distinguished clients here, you will truly understand the magic of these countries and how close they are and how, how less time you will be spending on the bus and how much time you will be spending just enjoying the surroundings and how hospital the whole area is and uh, how hospital in all senses because uh, all these countries are also visa-free for Americans. So I really hope that 2021 will put a stop onto this COVID situation and uh, the travel will not any longer be called as a non-essential travel. So we have much to explore and this is our invitation for you. And I hope we will see each other very soon on the first departure for Hidden Gems of Europe. Thank you. Arbona, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, your voice just really pulls you into the pictures and the experience and the opportunity. And listen, there is a lot of beauty. We can only show so much of it, but it is one of those destinations that give you an opportunity to really get immersed into a region that typically isn't touched on that much, but has a lot of the historical perspectives that most of Europe does in four little areas. So thank you so much uh, for sharing that with such passion. Uh, next up, uh, we are going to talk briefly about how the Hidden Gems came about with our LSGD program. Uh, Lita Poljevac will be uh, taking over at this stage. So Lita, it's all you. Hi, Michael. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I would like to thank uh, to Arbana and to Ember to being part of this webinar. Arbana, it was really lovely to listen to you. And as uh, for every our uh, uh, webinars in the end, we kind of like to feature our programs that we have for those destinations. And I'm sure you already heard about our luxury small group departures. Um, if you remember in the previous slides, the little badges that has the LSGD on it, those are put there on purpose to show you that we are visiting exactly those places that Arbana presented to us today during the itinerary of our exclusive, beautiful, luxury small tours that we have for the hidden gems of Europe. Um, just to give you a quick overview about uh, the product, it is our new luxury product. It is fixed departure dates, guided tours, that were inspired by the core values of our company, which are expect more and do more because we want to create those memories beyond destinations. It is always done as a small intimate group with a maximum of 14 passenger, passengers. Often we like to say that we do this um, as a hybrid itinerary uh, global destinations throughout the world, we always have the same structure. This is why we call it a hybrid. We do visits to all the main attractions, but we also take you off the beaten path and we provide those opportunities for the guests to have the uh, immersion in the cultural experiences included in the tour, but also we always plan for free time inside the itinerary so they can also go ahead and have their own experiences that you cannot have in a guided setting. You have to be on your own out there. So this is why our luxury small groups are so special. We always include the individual arrival and departure transfers with an English speaking driver. So your clients are free to arrive anytime during the day. Um, we handpick our tour managers uh, and then we train them. So they will have on each and every tour throughout the world always a local professional passionate tour manager. And I think that's the greatest asset because they have that connection with the destination 24 seven. 
Uh, on the first day toward the evening, we have the welcome meeting and followed by, uh, followed with a welcome dinner um, in a local restaurant. And very often we also have some entertainment. All the vehicles that we're using are always luxury modern vehicles. Um, as I already said, visits to the major sites, sites, but also off the beaten path. Opportunities to meet locals and those have those unique experiences and cultural connections along with a lot of free time. On the last day, we always have a farewell dinner so they can always start and end the tour with a blast and with a fun evening and just those unique experiences with cuisine and all that you get from the destination, the very best. So this is here just shown on the map, our uh, program, as you can see, it's a 10 days, nine nights program that Arbana and myself have worked to put together and we do believe and agree that we included all of the best highlights of all four destinations. So that is really something that is really unique and special. Um, we discover Albania through all the historic cities and the homemade sweets and the wines and all that you have heard from Arbana, it will be included in our tour. Um, then as well in Macedonia and Montenegro and most of the destinations that we visit are going to be, in, uh, that were featured in the webinar are going to be included in our tour. And then the slides that you're, the slide that you're looking at right now, life and tradition of South Dalmatian, this is Croatia program and we are featuring it here just because our LSGD programs are very often combinable with each other. So if you have a client that goes to the Albania, to the Hidden Gems of Europe program and wants to continue for another week, um, they can continue and go on this tour and explore really immersive program for the Southern parts of Croatia, also with the full day in Montenegro. Um, we can go next. So this is just uh, an overview of our departures in 2021 for our luxury small group departures. And just to give you an idea, all that we are doing throughout Europe and Latin America, Asia, Africa, and also the Middle East. So with this, I believe that we are concluding the presentation and just one last exclusive announcement just for you guys that are here with us today. Uh, in the summer of 2022, we will have one new LSGD program that will be Albania only, family friendly with a lot of beach time, free time, amazing activities and sightseeing. So stay tuned with our newsletters and follow our website. So from here, I will just uh, take a look at our Q&A. So uh, it is now the time to put there if you have any questions. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Um, so, okay, we have um, a question here that may maybe will be for you, Michael. Do you organize, organize FAMS? I have been to Macedonia and Montenegro and confirmed that these countries are beautiful. I would like to go to Albania and Kosovo to promote these countries. Thank you for this great presentation. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. And yes, um, listen, we have, uh, prior to COVID, I can tell you in 2019, we had 10 uh, education trips that we called throughout the world and we were planning on having several obviously in 2020. Uh, and so we've had to take a pause on that, but coming in 2021, as soon as travel is safe and you're feeling safe to travel and borders are open and travelers are willing to go, we will start loading up our education trips uh, throughout the globe. And this certainly is gonna be one of those regions that we're gonna take advantage of uh, since it is hidden <laughs> and we wanna have it become more familiar to more people. So thank you for the question. Thank you, Michael. Uh, here, I will just read through some of the comments. Uh, we have Angelica uh, 
Figuero saying, I'm sorry to leave this before it's finished, but I have another webinar to attend. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. God bless you all. Um, then we have another question that would be probably for you, uh, Michael. Again, uh, can we share this webinar with clients so they can see a webinar about these destinations? 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. And listen, we, as we always say, we are a tour operator, 53 years, but we really view ourselves as a marketing company that happens to be in the tourism industry. So we do these webinars, we put these destination videos, all in the support of providing, providing a library of resource for you. Each one of you will get uh, a copy of this webinar as it's recorded right now, within an hour, I think, after uh, we get off. But we also then edit it, take off some of the things about the company and have it be really specific about the destination. And then we load it up on our website as well as our YouTube channel. So you can use either one of those resources. You can go to iworldoftravel.com forward slash videos. You'll see three categories, education, webinars, destination videos, or, and we have our webinars there as well as specific videos for the destination, or you can go to our YouTube uh, forward slash iWorld of Travel, and you'll see an incredible library of options available for you to take advantage of for your education, your teams, as well as for your clients. And I should mention, if there's ever a need for us to support or be involved with a presentation to your clients, we want you to look at us as a resource. We'll schedule a Zoom. We'll, we'll do the presentation up for you on your behalf. Again, we want to be looked at as a resource for you, as a marketing arm. Whatever you need, that's what we're here to help for. Thank you, Michael. Now, just to read another few comments, beautiful presentation. Will you be sending us a video so we share it with our colleagues? So I guess we already answered that. Um, and then going forward, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Had been booking Israel um, for over 30 years. Glad I find, found you again. Um, so, so these are the few uh, comments. And one more question has popped up. Uh, can we have the copy of this webinar, but also some pictures to send to the clients or to post in the, in the website? A hundred percent. You can email any one of us. It's our first initial last name at iworldtravel.com. So either M. Gelber at iworldtravel.com, Zahab Zibaton at iworldtravel, or uh, Alita Poljevec, A. Poljevec at iworldtravel.com. We'll provide you whatever resource you need. If you need us to create a one sheet for you as well, highlighting and featuring the destination, uh, we have our creative uh, consultant director in house, and we can create that for you too. So just use us in any way that we can help you with. Michael, uh, if I may say, uh, um, the other resource that you can use all uh, are the videos. Uh, the video that you saw in the beginning of the, uh, uh, the webinar is in our website and you can use it uh, to just present it or you can forward it to your, uh, or you can share it with your clients uh, with any of your social media. Uh, many, travel, many travel advisors have been doing it and they were very happy with the uh, result of it, of the, uh, actually the number of travel agents who were watching it. Um, and the other thing that I would like uh, to say, Michael, is that I'm so proud to be as part of a company where we are a leader and not followers. And I think that this webinar uh, proved it 100%. I'm not sure how many companies would um, uh, promote such destinations that are really hidden and are, uh, that, uh, and are unknown in a way for many uh, travel agents. Uh, this is the way, the way we see our company and uh, I hope that uh, our travel, uh, uh, the participants, I would say, uh, could look through it. I'm so happy to be kind of a, a leader, not to talk about uh, 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 commission on deposit that we have done it much before or long before uh, the COVID and here so many companies are following our footsteps. So thank you, Michael, for your leadership with it. Thank you, Zahava. Thank you, Zahava. That was, uh, I agree 100%. 
Um, I just wanted to say to everyone who is still here with us, uh, I, put, I put just our all three of our contacts in the chat, so you can copy paste them from there. Uh, if you have any last minute questions, uh, uh, hurry up to post them. Otherwise, Michael, I turn it back to you for closing it. Okay, well, I think that's it. Uh, again, thank you to uh, not only you and uh, Zahaba, but also Enver and especially Arbana uh, for presenting these destinations in such a soft and passionate and interesting and inviting way. Uh, we hope to uh, be working with uh, you and the team much more as we move forward. So uh, again, thank you. Everyone stay. Listen, I know these are difficult times. You've heard it from everybody. You're getting overloaded with emails and newsletters and updates and so on. It's the bottom line. You know, we have time to pause. Pause with your family. Appreciate the fact that we wake up every day. Appreciate your family being there. We'll get through this. It's the toughest time for anybody and everybody. It's global. We're all in this together, it's not a, just a coin term, it's the absolute truth uh, in today's time more than any other time. And uh, just realize you're not alone. We're here for you. We're here for whatever you need and uh, make sure you're there for your family and your friends as well during these times because in 2021, you probably won't have a lot of time to spend with them and you'll be working on bookings. So this is the time to really appreciate as we go into the holidays and reflect on 2020 and what it could be for 2021. So again, thank you for participating uh, and uh, have a good afternoon, a good evening. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very Bye -bye. much.